Hi, I'm Rachel, and this is belly dance stage makeup uh, with cruelty free makeup. Disclaimer, I am not a professional makeup artist, I am a professional belly dancer with a lot of experience doing makeup for different kinds of events. The makeup I'm going to be talking about today is primarily for stage, so that means bright lights, more distant audience, and not a whole lot of natural. <laughs> the idea with stage lights is that they wash you out, and from a distance, if you're not wearing a lot of makeup, it kind of looks like you don't have a face. So literally what we need to do is like draw on features. We need to go, here are my eyes, like with big crayons, and like here is my nose and my mouth and my cheeks, so that we can create expression and have our faces be seen um, from a distance. There might be some things that I'm gonna be doing in this video that might seem like a big makeup don't, and that would definitely be true if we were doing um, a daytime close-up gig so say a day wedding or even just regular human makeup. Keep in mind that this is uh, stage makeup for performance um, so we can go a little bit more dramatic and not have to be quite as precise. Step one, you wanna make sure that your face is clean. Um, so just wash it as usual with something that's not too drying and then moisturize and give your skin a little bit of time to absorb that moisture. Definitely use something that not oil-based because if you use an oil-based moisturizer, even if your skin loves it, once you start to sweat, not if when you start to sweat on stage because stage lights are hot and you're nervous and you're dancing then um, your makeup will end up on your chest and that's not a very good look we want to keep the makeup generally above the chin step two do your hair a lot of students have been asking me how I curl my hair I'm not particularly amazing at it but I'll just show you my process so I'm going to be doing pin curls with a uh, curling iron I'm going to be using a uh, I don't know what this is. Kind of looks like a dildo, but it's not. You do not want to stick this up your vagina. That would hurt really, really bad. kind of get the idea I'm gonna continue in sections until my whole head is done hair done step three hairspray the shit out of your hair Ah, uh, by the way if you ever wondered what the sexy side shave looks like after a year of growing it out this is how it looks so if you're considering a side shave and you don't want to go through with this just skip that you're welcome all right I'm gonna put this all away so that I don't get makeup on my hair and so that I don't have to look like a grandmother with a weird mullet. By the way, I forgot to mention that the reason why I was doing the curls up instead of flat against my head is because it gives it more volume. If you want that more vintage uh, kind of pin curls look, then you would do the same thing that I did, but you would take the curls flat against your head and pin them rather than have them stick away from the head, which gives it that really cool grandma ha hairstyle. If you have a different way of doing your hair, that's fine as well. And step three is to prime your skin. I'm gonna be using Kat Von D Lock It Primer. Take a nice little sploosh of that. Maybe a little bit more, just a touch. I'm just going to use my hands. So notice how I'm not doing my eyes. I'm going to be using a separate primer for my eyes. This is just for your face. And I'm not really even going under the eyes as well. I'm kind of avoiding the whole eye socket area. Um, do make sure, however, that you go all the way to your ears and to your hairline and also down your neck. Before you continue, here's a handy dandy tip. Something to have by is a makeup wipe. Um, this is really great so that you can clean your hands as you go because sometimes you get stuff on your hands and then you go to touch your face and then you've ruined your entire makeup. Um, and also a nice way to clean your palette because you're going to be using your back of your hand as a palette. So just having this nearby is good. Another thing that's handy to have by is a bottle of um, rubbing alcohol. This allows me to clean my brushes as I go. Once the primer has sat for a little bit, we're going to create foundation. 
So with the foundation, you don't want to layer it on too thick. You just want to create a bit of a smoother palette. Even though it is stage um, and you do want to have a nice clean slate, you also don't want to layer on the makeup too thick because it will start to melt and will be uncomfortable. So you just want to do a light coverage and then you can use concealer to cover up any additional blemishes. I use a slightly darker shade and a slightly lighter shade and I mix them together. And this way in the summer when I'm a little bit darker, I use more of the darker and in the winter, I use a little bit more of the lighter. So for the foundation, for the darker color, I'm using Veil by Hourglass. It makes your skin look so nice. And then for the lighter color, I'm just using a few drops of uh, Cover Effects in a quite light color. So again, I'm going to use the back of my hand as a palette, like I mentioned. So I'm just going to take one squeeze of the Hourglass and then two, let's say two drops. I'm a little bit lighter than usual, so I'm going to use two drops of the Cover Effects. And I'm just going to use my finger to blend this. Just make sure it's really, really blended. And I'm just going to apply it with my finger, just kind of dabbing it all over. Make sure to do, again, a light coverage. Um, you can always add on more. And I'm going to use a sponge blender that I have just pre-moistened, and I'm going to blend everything in. So as you can see, it hasn't um, completely covered blemishes. It's just given me a little bit more of an even skin tone. So now I'm going to go in with a concealer. I'm going to be using the Kat Von D Lock It Concealer. And I'm just again going to use the back of my hand as a palette just to give a very tiny amount. You really don't need much. A lot goes a long way with this. And I'm just going to use my finger to apply to any blemishes that I notice. And then again, I'm going to use my blender to blend that in. If you've got a really stubborn blemish, you might need to do a few more layers, maybe add, uh, do your powder later and then add a little bit more later on. So we can always touch up as we go. And you might have some beauty marks or some things that you might not want to cover. Um, I have a big beauty mark here and it just takes too much makeup to cover it and I don't really mind it, so I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna set that before I do anything else. I'm going to be using Hourglass Really Light Compact. So it's just this really nice light, almost shimmery color. And I'm going to be using a big fluffy brush also from Hourglass. So I'm just going to take a light dusting, tap off the excess, and just do a really light brushing just to help to set uh, my foundation as I start to layer on a little bit more. Don't do a lot of powder here because you are going to keep putting more stuff on. And every time that you add another product, you add another layer of texture. Now we're going to contour. Yay! So I'm going to be using dun, 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 the Kat Von D Contour Palette. This just has so many awesome colors. Um, and so you, I'm going to be using the associated Kat Von D Contour Brush. So you have this uh, end tip here for light colors and an angled brush for contouring. I'm going to take this kind of light peachy tone with my highlighter, tap off the extras, and I'm going to go into wherever I want to highlight. So basically you want to think about your face as if you were drawing a picture. Where would you put in highlight and where would you put in shadow? So in real life, shadow is created already, but because the stage lights are going to wash you out, you want to create shadow with color. So we're going to use highlighter. I'm going to do a little bit on my forehead and down the bridge of my nose. I'm going to do my cheekbones. Because you're sweating on stage, you don't necessarily want to use a cream-based concealer because it will start to move and melt and it just might feel really uncomfortable. I tend to have oily skin, so also I find that a powder just works a bit better for me. I'm going to go in with a smaller brush to do some detailing here. So I'm going to start with this mid-tone and I'm going to create a cheekbone for myself. So you want to find where the shadow of your natural cheekbone is and then you can draw a cheekbone for yourself. If you don't have a very high cheekbone, you can make it higher by drawing your line a little bit higher. And everyone nice, loves a nice strong jawbone, so we're going to create one. Be careful here because you can create a beard and that might not be the look you're going for. And I'm also going to highlight my cheekbones by doing the divot in my temple. And this is going to create a little bit more shape for the cheekbone. And then I'm going to make my nose look a little bit smaller and sharper by going down the sides of the nose and tapering it in 
and bringing it up a little bit as well. So now I'm going to use my big fluffy angle brush and I'm going to create a forehead for myself. This is especially important if you are blonde because if you have light colored hair, the stage lights will blend your forehead into your hair and you might look a little bit bald. So you can create a more defined line for yourself and I'm just going to blend everything in. You don't need to blend too much for stage, again, because we want the lines to be a little bit sharper. So it doesn't have to look the way you, that you would want it to look in real life in natural lighting like I'm in right now. So now we can really have fun with it and we can start to contour uh, the neck and delicote as well. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do a slightly darker color just because my body's a little bit darker. And then also highlight. And usually when I dance on stage, I just put glitter all over my whole body. So that helps to reflect a lot of light as well. All right, eyes up here, girls. So now <laughs> we're going to blush. I have two options for cruelty-free blush. Um, I really like the bronzed FX in, um, this is called Golden Peach. Um, that's a really nice color. I usually use that one. I usually use that one. Today I'm gonna to be using NARS, um, and this is called, <laughs> this is called Deep Throat. Really NARS. So I'm just going to use the same blush, blush that I used for contouring. And here I'm going to use my handy dandy uh, alcohol. I'm just going to give it a bit of a spritz. And then I'm just going to use a tissue and wipe off the excess color. And I'm just going to let that dry for a little bit. Step 652. While you're waiting, have a snack. Continue. Blush. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah. So I'm gonna go not quite on the apples of my cheeks. I'm gonna do a little bit more of a vintage look today and go a little bit above the apples. So if you wanna make really big rosy happy faces, you can go smile and go on the apples of your cheeks. Um, if you want a little bit more of a vintage look or a little bit more of a dramatic look, then you can go above the cheek, sorry, above the apple and blend a little bit more from the temple. Now remember, this is not real life, this is stage. So if you do a nice bronzy, blushy pink, no one's gonna see shit. So you need to really layer on the blush until you look like a doll. Woo, cheeks! <laughs> so now you just wanna set all of your face again. So I'm gonna be using my hourglass, um, compact and my big fluffy brush <sighs> tap off the extra don't blow and then you're going to just do a really light dusting and kind of brushing motions just to set all of that face is done hopefully that doesn't look too shitty so now we're gonna do eyes you need to prime your eyes I'm using NARS Pro Prime Supreme Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base 600 words that are necessary. It's primer. It's NARS Eye Primer. It's the only one they have, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just going to dab a little bit onto everywhere, basically, from my lash line and the corner of my eye all the way up to my brow bone and extending out to where my cat wing is going to go. And then I'm going to blend that with my finger just gently. Now don't use too much primer. So you wanna just do a light enough layer that it holds your makeup in place. It creates a smooth surface to apply um, shadow and helps it stay a little bit longer. While that's sitting, cause I wanna give it at least 30 seconds to sit, I'm going to um, conceal uh, the bottom of my eyes. So I'm gonna also be using, this is also NARS, and this is the Radiant Creamy Concealer. And I'm gonna go in long strokes, extending from the corner of my eye down towards my nostril, and then coming out in sort of a sunburst to basically to my cheek. Done. Just kidding. Fingers, blend. Blend. 
And then I'm gonna use my sponge blender, and take off any excess and just blend it a little bit more. Then I'm gonna go in with my hourglass powder again and my fluffy brush. And I'm gonna dab on here because I want a little bit more and I'm gonna brush it off later. This is kind of like a lazy baking. I'm just sort of putting on a little bit more powder than I need. Primer is set, but actually what I'm gonna do now is eyebrows. I'm gonna be using Anastasia. I don't know if it's Anastasia or Anastasia. Let's just say Anastasia. Um, so this is the brow pomade in light brown and a brow brush. Blush. Um, I like to use the back of my hand as a palette because otherwise it comes out a bit clumpy. So I'm just gonna take a small amount, brush it onto my palm. Don't worry about uh, very natural looking eyebrows. Again, this is stage. You want to see your eyebrows. The Egyptian um, aesthetic right now, the style in Egypt, is to create these sort of sad eyebrows that kind of go up like this. Um, you can see Camellia Masrea and uh, Randa Kamal, for examples. I'm not really going to do that, maybe a tiny little bit. Now I'm going to be doing a really long cat wing with my eye makeup, so I want to make sure that my eyebrow extends at least as far. So I'm going to pull out. My eyebrow also tends to go down a little bit and my eye makeup is going to come up and I don't want those two points to look like they're going to meet. So I'm going to lift the corner of the eye a little bit as well, or eyebrow. Oh, all the emotions. I may find that as I start doing my eye makeup that this ends up not looking dark enough. I know it looks a little bit intense right now, um, but as I start to do this really black eye, this might I might have to add on. So you can just keep adding as you go. So now the trick is to make the other one look at least somewhat similar. Um, the saying is that you want them to be uh, sisters but not twins. Um, though my, mine usually end up kind of looking like distant cousins, but let's just keep your face angled and no one will tell. Or just go like this. Just constantly move your eyebrows and no one will be able to tell. Right, so maybe I'm blind, but I think that's relatively even. Maybe. Okie dokie, so before we do uh, eyeshadow, we're going to actually highlight the eyes. I'm going to be using the same palette that I was using to contour. Sorry, we're going to contour the eyes. So I'm going to take this middle tone and just create a neutral base over the whole eye. So the reason why you want to contour your eyes is because if you don't, your makeup will end up looking a little bit clumpy. It's always better to build color and just to have a nice smooth surface to work with. It also will help your shadow stay on longer. And now we're going to start to build color in. So I'm going to take increasingly darker colors and start to contour. So where I want to show my crease, I have hooded eyes. That means that when I relax my eyes or when I smile, you can't see my eyelid anymore. It disappears. So if I do all of this great stuff here and then I smile, which I'm hopefully going to be doing most of the time on stage, then you're not going to see any of it. So what I'm going to do is lift my crease slightly with optical illusion, basically with contouring. You just want to draw in your eyes how you want them to be. So I'm going to take a slightly darker color. I'm going to start lighter and work my way darker and just start to build above my crease. If you don't have hooded eyes and you have a nice big high eyelid, then you can just contour your natural crease. I'm also going to be doing this wing shape, so I'm going to start to build color underneath that so that when I do the black on my wing, it doesn't just come on clumpy. And I'm going to go in increasingly darker, so I'm going to start to work my way down the palette. If you already have dark skin, then you don't need to go through as many steps to build color. But you do also need to go a little bit darker with your makeup. I'm going to use a fine angled brush. You can also just use the same brush that you used for your eyebrows. And then you want to take the darkest color that you can. I'm just going to be using black. And then you just want to go above 
maybe a millimeter or two above your own natural crease. So see, this is my crease. It's quite exaggerated right now. And see how I've been building color and creating this crease that's about two millimeters above that. So I'm gonna go in really carefully and just exaggerate that a little bit more. Make sure not to go too far into the corner of your eye. This is a really sloppy cut crease. Again, it's for stage. If I was doing this for daytime makeup or real life makeup, I'd be doing this a lot more carefully. So now I have more eyelid space to play with. I've just given myself a bigger palette. So now you can just do any eye makeup on top of that. If you have very large eyes um, or if you have dark eyes, you don't need to do as much uh, with your eyeshadow. You can just do this contouring, maybe do a little bit more brown in the corners and then just do shimmer or color on your eyelids. Um, I have very small eyes and when I smile they disappear, so I need to really build my eyes up bigger on stage so that I have some. I'm going to start with lighter colors and work, work my way darker. So at first I want to highlight. I'm going to be using again Anastasia or Anastasia or Anastasia. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, madame. And I'm just going to be using this really light pink shimmery color. And I'm going to use another Kat Von D brush. Um, and I'm going to be using this angled uh, highlighter brush and going into the corners of the eyes. And I'm also going to highlight the brow bone. Now this is for some people a don't um, for real life makeup, but for stage I think it looks really nice and it just kind of helps to create a definition between your eye line, your eyeshadow and your brows. So along the brow bone just to kind of highlight the eyebrow itself and that also helps to hide where I faked the shape of my eyebrow so I can try to cover up my real eyebrow a little bit. And I'm going to take this slightly darker peachy color because I'm going to work into a red so I want to have a bit of a transition so I'm going to go from where I created that highlight in the corner of my eye and start to work this onto the eyelid and then really lightly I'm also going to take this color all the way up just in the inside of the eye into the brow So now I'm going to be using a Kat Von D hyper pigmented super awesome red and again using that same brush and I'm just going to start to build from the inside of my iris to uh, the outside of where I created this cut crease. So now we're going to go really dark and I'm going to create this dark winged eye look. Um, I'm using, you just want to use a black eyeshadow, ideally matte. Um, I'm using Gosh, it is cruelty free, it's not very good, um, but it's just what I have. It also has a bit of shimmer in it, which isn't fantastic, but that's what I've got. So I'm still going to be using the same brush that I've been using. Again, I just wiped it down so I don't have too much red pigment in it. Be really careful with the black. You want to build on slowly because if you just put on too much at once, first of all, it's going to fall onto your uh, under eye makeup and kind of ruin everything. Um, and also it might come out a little bit clumpy. Mine is probably going to come out clumpy anyway, but I'm just telling you what I'm supposed to tell you. <laughs> so I'm going to follow this line to create a upward pull of my eye. And I'm gonna go into that crease that I created and just slowly start to blend upwards without going too high towards my brow bone. So I'm gonna be using a Kat Von D Tattoo Liner. Um, this is the only waterproof uh, gel tip eyeliner that I found that went on kind of smoothly. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's pretty good. So the way that you wanna go into the uh, top lash line is to go sideways. So you don't wanna go this way because then you're not gonna have very much control. So you wanna go sideways along the lash line and just go with a thin line to start and you can build it as you go. And then I'm going to follow this uh, line that I created to create a lifted wing. Now I know some people will say don't create a, a big dramatic cat wing on a hooded eye and don't take it super far out. I don't give a shit. It's stage. We want to make it look super dramatic and big. It doesn't have to look 
perfect. Uh, while the camera was off, I also just went over my uh, eyebrows again. Might have gone a little bit too far, but who gives a shit? That's the motto of today. Who gives a shit? So now I'm going to do my bottom lid. For the bottom lid, I love Marc Jacobs. So I'm just going to gently pull down, don't pull too much, and I'm just going to go into the waterline. And I'm going to connect where the top wing starts to come into the bottom line as well. Now I'm just going to smoke that out a little bit. So I'm going to take my black gosh uh, shadow and just an angled brush, the same one that I used to make my cut crease. And I'm going to go over the gel and that helps to set it as well and just start to pull it down a little bit lower. So now I'm starting to get some drama. So now we're gonna do glitter, lashes, and lips. For lashes, the first thing you wanna do is curl your lashes and put on your mascara. You know how to do that, so I'm just gonna turn the camera off to do that. All right, so lashes have been curled. I'm using Tarte uh, Splashes. This is the only cruelty-free waterproof mascara that I could find. If you have a cruelty-free waterproof mascara that you love, uh, please let me know. Um, it's not my favorite, but it's fine. It totally works, it's good. So now we're gonna do eyelashes. Usually for me, I have very, um, I'm putting scissors near my eyes, I have very small eyes, so when I buy eyelashes, they're too long for my eye. So if I were to put this in the corner of my eye, it would end up on my nose. So I just want to show you when I buy eyelashes, I always take about two to three millimeters off. That's a much better length for me. I have a pair that I've already prepared. These are just red cherry lashes. They're from the States. They're super cheap. They're cruelty free. Um, and I use them almost every weekend for shows and I've been using them for almost over a year. You just gently peel the glue off and you just keep going. I'm going to be using uh, Duo Lash Glue. This dries black. You can also buy the white. It's in a blue bottle and it comes out white and it dries clear. Um, this one comes out gray and dries black. And I just put a little dab on my knuckle. And then I'm going to drag the eyelash through the glue. And I just find this is a better way to control how much glue ends up on the eyelash rather than trying to pour it directly from the bottle. And it's a little bit easier than using a Q-tip or any kind of tool. So once you have a decent amount of glue on the lash, you just want to let that sit and dry. So luckily for you, I already have my other one prepared. It's ready to go. You just want to wait about 30 seconds to let the dry become tacky. I know, haha, that's very funny because lashes are tacky. Everyone's made that joke. Woo! Okay, so you want to find the outer corner of your eye and the outer corner of the lash. And then you just want to push it into the corners and hold it down for a few seconds until it sticks. I'm going to come back with the other one done. So both my lashes are on. Um, it's really important to take your time to do them properly. Sometimes you put them on and they just like don't quite sit right. And as you're putting them on, you can also work to lift them a little bit so they don't fall onto your eyes. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention, make sure you're using waterproof mascara. I did say that my mascara was waterproof, but I, I want to stress the importance of waterproof mascara and eyeliner because again, when you sweat, your makeup will end up off your face. Um, that being said, I usually don't put mascara on my bottom lashes. Um, even though it's waterproof, it still will end up usually on the bottom of my eye. We are going to do glitter. So I'm going to take a setter. You can also use setting spray. So if you have a setting spray, you can spray a whole bunch onto your finger and dab that into wherever you want to put glitter. Woo! So I like to put glitter on my cheekbones. You can put glitter on your eyelids, you can put glitter on your lower lid, so it kind of looks like you're crying. That can look really cool. Um, so I'm just going to show you this look, but you can kind of go crazy with it. You can put rhinestones all over your face. Um, just go nuts with whatever you want to do with glitter. I'm also going to highlight, and I'm just going to go right underneath my sharp eyeliner line just to help to highlight it and clean it up and make it look a little bit sharper. Sharper. I should have done that before I put on my glitter. I also forgot to mention, before you put on your glitter, you can go over with your blush again. I already did it with the camera was off. So now we're gonna do lips. I'm gonna be using Marc Jacobs Lip Liner. It doesn't have a name. It's just Marc Jacobs. It's literally Marc Jacobs in a tube, and I'm gonna put him on my lips. 
You want to line your lips and I'm also going to fill them in. You want to go a little bit below your bottom line, not necessarily the top line. You totally can if you want to go for the drag queen look and make your lips even bigger. You can like draw outside of your lips. Draw outside the lines, kids. So now I'm going to be using Marc Jacobs lipsticks. I'm going to use two different colors, a darker one and a lighter one. This is a trick I learned from Cami Little and I love it. It makes your lips look kind of cartoony and really makes them pop. So I'm going to take my darker color into the outer corners of the lips. You can use a um, lip uh, brush for this. I'm lazy. I'm just going to go straight on. And then I'm going to take my lighter color in the middle. And then if you really want to have fun with it, you can take shimmer or glitter. I'm going to do glitter because it's in my hand. And dab on the bottom lip. I'm going to take my hair down so you can see the final look and then I'll show you two different alternative looks to go a little bit darker. Taking the eyeliner a little bit deeper into the middle of the eye and then also taking black onto the eyelid. Woo! So as you take your hair down, you just want to gently comb out the curls and then apply more hairspray. So there's your finished stage look. Um, we used cruelty-free products and um, hopefully had not too terrible of a time doing it. So here's an alternative look. This is um, taking the bottom liner way further in towards the corner of the eye, um, also extending the upper line, and then um, just smoking it out way more. So it's more of a dramatic look. And here's another alternative look. This is taking the black shadow way closer in towards the corner of the eye. I didn't do a very good job, but just so you can kind of see how that looks. Just makes it a little bit more dark, a little bit more intense. And here's a final alternative look, glitter on the lower lash line. You can also keep the, the bottom line dark or uh, nothing and just do glitter on the top lash and that can look really cool as well. I would say choose one place to do glitter, so don't do cheeks and lower lash and upper lash because then you're just going to look wet. Um, so I would say either cheeks or, or lower lash or upper lash. Oh, I forgot one more thing, and that is setting spray. I'm using Kat Von D um, Lock and Load setting spray. So you just want to do a light misting over your face just to help set everything again because otherwise you will sweat it all off. I have done this makeup job with the primer and uh, powder and setting spray, and I have spent hours um, on stage or in a theater or going to multiple shows throughout a night doing photo shoots, and my makeup has stayed in place. Um, so it really does work as long as you use the right products and use them in the right way. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and you got something out of it. Um, and let me know if you have any questions or comments, and uh, see you on the dance floor. Oh yeah. And totally forgot to mention, while you're doing your shadow and your liner to coming up into that wing, if you don't feel confident um, making a clean line, you can use a card, like a business card, like this one. Who's that pretty girl? And you can use the business card to create that sharp line. So then you just hold it against your skin, use your brushes. You don't have to worry about it too much. When you take it off, you have this really nice clean line. But while you're at it, you can also join my newsletter um, at racheldance.com. If you haven't yet, be my friend on Facebook, Rachel Belly Dance, and uh, shameless self-promotion. Woo! And clean wings. <laughs>